Hello, this is Laura Avery, and I'm here to teach you a bit about testicular torsion. We're going to start with some normal ultrasound anatomy of the scrotum, extend into imaging findings of testicular torsion, and finish up with a couple of mimics. Here we have the normal sagittal image of the testicle, very homogeneous in echotexture, surrounded by a very echogenic band here of fibrous tissue known as the tunica albiginia. This tunica albiginia extends into the testicle and can be seen as this echogenic band in the mediastinum. At times within the mediastinum of the testis, there will be dilatation of the redis testis. These are anechoic dilated tubules, as seen here. It can be pretty dramatic. It's, pretty, it's present fairly frequently in up to 18 to 20% of patients and definitely increases with age. At times, technologists will measure this location and indicate that it may be pathologic. It's a good thing to know about. It's a normal variant. Exiting the testicle, we're now going to come to the epididymal head, this nice triangular appearance here, homogeneous in echo texture, extending down into a very thin, narrow epididymal body and tail. The entire epididymis and testicle are invaginated in the tunica vaginalis, which is a reflection of the peritoneum as it descends through the inguinal canal. Normal testicular blood flow is shown on this image. We have normal low resistant blood flow within the testicle. Maintain diastolic flow throughout the entire cycle of blood flow. The normal in resistive indices range from 0.4 to 0.7 and about 0.6 is, is considered normal. Testicular torsion. All right, let's go into a bit about testicular torsion itself. It's very common in, in most common in post prebital boys, probably between the ages of 13 and 16 and or neonates. The patient may come in with a classic history of rapid onset of pain, nausea, and vomiting. They could have classic physical exam findings of an absent cremasteric reflex, high riding testicle, swollen scrotum, and transverse lie of the testicle. Testicular viability is really dependent on the amount of time the testicle is ischemic. So if the patient is presents to the ER within a fairly rapid amount of time, the testicle is highly salvageable. After 24 hours, the salvageability rate obviously decreases significantly. The spermatic cord twists between 360 and 540 degrees. There can be significant occlusion of arterial flow, flow leading to testicular necrosis. All right, on to testicular anatomy. Here's a normal testicle. It is descended into the scrotal sac and is covered with the tunica vaginalis. In this case, the testicle is normally adhesed posteriorly um, where it has fused with the posterior aspect of the scrotum. At times, the testicle can be completely invaginated in the tunica vaginalis without any posterior attachment. This is referred to as the bell clapper deformity. It allows the testicle to have more mobility within the scrotal sac and can result in torsion. This is present in up to 12% of men and is oftentimes bilateral. All right, let's talk about testicular torsion ultrasound findings. The whirlpool sign or the twisting of the spermatic cord is extremely important and one of the most sensitive findings in testicular torsion. Altered blood flow, incomplete torsion will have a high resistive index in the testicle. Complete torsion will have no blood flow. That's a pretty easy diagnosis. Increased size and or heterogeneity of the testicle itself and or the epididymis and reactive changes of, changes of hydrocele or scrotal skin hyperemia. Here we have a case of bilateral testicles and we can see here the right testicle is enlarged in size, heterogeneous in echo texture comparatively to the left and color flow evaluation demonstrates no flow within the testicle as opposed to the normal low resisted um, flow within the left testicle. Now let's look at this case a little closer. Now we'll see the whirlpool sign of the twisted spermatic cord. Again, we see this nice whirling, twisting appearance here. Here's a case of testicular torsion where the testicles have similar echogenicity bilaterally very similar in appearance. We can see though that there's a small reactive hydrocele here on the right. Further evaluation with Doppler imaging demonstrates no discernible blood flow within the right testicle that is consistent with testicular torsion. Here we refer to this as the buddy view. This is the right testicle and the left testicle on the same image to make sure that the um, 
Doppler evaluation is consistent between both testicles, and you can see lack of blood flow on the right testicle. On further evaluation, you can actually see that the epididymis is enlarged and heterogeneous in echotexture, but without any blood flow within that epididymal region, unlike epididymitis, which would show increased blood flow. This is a typical finding of testicular torsion. Here's the normal left epididymis, which is small in size and triangular in configuration. Here we have a late stage testicular torsion. Here's the normal right testicle, again, homogeneous in echo texture, sagittal image, as opposed to our left testicle, which is very heterogeneous in echo texture with regions of hypoechoic um, testicular stroma consistent with testicular necrosis on this buddy view we see no significant flow within the testicle itself but see a bit of hyperemia in the scrotal wall which is even better seen on this dedicated um, color flow image so you can get some surrounding uh, blood flow hyperemia here's another case this is a case of testicular torsion where you can see the normal appearance of the transverse right testicle on this buddy view but you see a sagittal appearance of the left testicle so this is an abnormally torse testicle with abnormal lie on the dedicated sagittal images of each testicle you see the homogeneous right testicle as opposed to the enlarged heterogeneous echotexture of the left testicle the left epididymis is shown again heterogeneous in configuration but without increased blood flow so an enlarged heterogeneous ep epididymis without blood flow. At the body view, again, lack of blood flow in our left testicle consistent with testicular torsion. Here we have a case that's a little bit more confusing. Here we have the body view. We have maintained blood flow in both testicles. On the dedicated imaging of the testicles, you can see that there's again maintained blood flow within each testicle. But if we look closer at the left epididymis, we can see that there's enlargement of the left epididymis without any blood flow. And if we look back at these Doppler waveforms, we'll notice the resistive index of the right testicle is much lower than the higher resistive index of the, right, of the left testicle, the torus testicle. This patient was taken to surgery because of their significant pain, and indeed testicular torsion with maintained blood flow was seen on the left. The patient's testicle was detorsed and salvageable. So intratesticular blood flow can be present in up to 30% of cases, something to be very aware of um, in order to make the diagnosis in early cases that have the most salvageability rate. All right, now let's go on to a couple of mimics of testicular torsion that may occur. Here's the testicular appendage torsion. This can occur and have a similar um, presentation by patients, a lot of pain and, and or swelling. So the testicular appendage is a little remnant here that is seen at the level of the epididymal head and testicle junction. It's about five millimeters in size. Here is this patient's uh, buddy view. You can see that the two testicles have similar blood flow. But when we scroll through the testicle, through, scroll, pardon me, scroll through the scrotum, we can see a pretty large um, hydrocele enlargement of the epididymis. And a little closer, we can actually notice that there is a enlarged appendage in that location. On color flow, we can see that there's increased hyperemia, but no significant blood flow in this actual torsed appendage here. Again, we have the epididymis enlarged and hyperemic with this enlarged testicular appendage, and that lacks blood flow. At times, in a very delayed fashion, after the appendage has torse, it can actually um, be released into the scrotal sac and calcify, and this is known as a scrotal pearl. This is a calcification with dense posterior shadowing known as a scrotal pearl. They can be palpable on exam. Next, we have a segmental testicular infarct. This is something to be aware of. This is a patient who had a vasectomy a few days earlier. This is usually something that occurs in patients with either vasculitis or recent surgical intervention. This is a hypoechoic, um, very wedge-shaped hypoechoic peripheral uh, region within the testicle without blood flow. Now, this is a testicular infarct, but does need to have follow-up in six to eight weeks to to completely exclude the possibility of an underlying mass lesion. Um, these usually do involute, they can fibrose and become palpable as well. Here's a patient who had had a recent inguinal hernia repair. And rather than torsion, this was actually a testicular necrosis from a very tight hernia repair and compromise of 
blood flow through the spermatic cord. Um, you can see again these peripheral hypoechoic regions consistent with infarction. This patient went for emergent release of that uh, surgical repair and salvageability of this testicle. Here's a case of very dramatic epididymal orchitis causing testicular necrosis. Here we see a classic appearance of a very large heterogeneous epididymis with increased vascular flow. The patient was treated, but two weeks later came back with a large heterogeneous um, pyocele, hydrocele here, net-like appearance of that location, enlargement, uh, very heterogeneous echo texture of the testicle, and on Doppler flow, you can see that there was no um, flow even on power Doppler, and here you can see echogenic um, uh, with the dirty shadowing consistent with air within this necrosed testicle. So at times, you can actually get testicular necrosis from severe, severe um, epididymal orchitis. So conclusion, time is critical for testicular salvageability. Always evaluate the spermatic cord for the whirlpool sign. You want to look, if you see an enlarged epididymis without increased blood flow, really consider that there could be a testicular torsion. You want to look for asymmetry of the resistive indices if you still have maintained blood flow, since those are the more difficult cases. Um, and you want to look for that uh, heterogeneous enlargement of the testicular echo texture or epididymis, and be familiar with all the other causes of scrotal pain. Thank you very much. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video.